Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle Channel. This is the Friday Tech Chat. And this week we're going to look at graphene in battery technology. Next week we're going to take a very sensible no drama look at battery safety, which I think will bring all of this battery stuff I've been looking at together and look at what the problems really are and what some solutions might be. If there's anything in particular you want me to cover in that video, let me know in the comments. This video won't be much in terms of graphics, it's more of a have a listen and join in the discussion. There will be some archive footage to look at if you want. If you like these videos, please leave me a like, it does make a huge difference and if you subscribe as well, it's really truly appreciated. Thank you. Anyway, graphene. This is something that has absolutely fascinated me for almost 20 years now. First discovered in 2004, graphene is a pretty remarkable thing. It's a single layer of carbon atoms formed in a lattice structure, and it excels at conducting electricity and heat. It combines these properties with incredible strength and flexibility. I remember first seeing graphene on a program in the UK which is called Horizon. I used to love that program because it looked at all kinds of different technologies and how they might change our world. I remember being absolutely amazed at graphene. Perhaps naively, I then expected it to be being used much more than it actually is. But it turns out that creating it in a lab is one thing, making it on an industrial scale and incorporating it economically into consumable products is something entirely different. And I think everyone is probably getting a bit bored to death of hearing how this miracle material is going to change the world. However, I do get the impression that things are finally starting to change of late and the graphene might start to actually make it out of the lab and into products that we can actually use. Due to its characteristics, its potential for use in energy storage is enormous. Despite it being used though in battery experiments pretty much since its invention, it's taken a long time for it to reach the point where it could really be considered for any kind of commercial product. However, I think it is now coming of age, and I think that over the next few years, we'll start to see more and more battery products using graphene in one way or another. Some of the ways that manufacturers want to use graphene's properties is to enhance the charging and discharging rates of a cell. Graphene is an incredible conductor with very little resistance, so incorporating graphene should allow for a cell to be charged faster and discharged faster. A faster charging cycle would make electric vehicles more viable. A higher discharge rate would allow for bursts of high power to be used without taxing the battery as much. Both rapid charging and rapid discharging are things that generate heat, which is where graphene's thermal properties could be very useful with batteries. Graphene's efficiency in conducting heat could more effectively dissipate the heat generated during discharge, preventing a battery from overheating and causing a thermal runaway. Right now, with vehicle batteries of any size, allowance has to be made for cooling, and that is space that could be used to increase capacity if it was not needed, or it could make up for a lower energy density using the saved space for more cells. I do actually have some personal experience using lithium polymer cells using graphene, and these are still made by Turnergy. I used them with my e-bikes and was able to make a 72 volt battery with them. The performance of the cells was pretty amazing, but they were really big even for lipo cells. I don't exactly know how Turnergy implemented the graphene, but the cells did have very low resistance, they had very little voltage sag, but they weighed as much as twice the capacity of lithium ion and were not really very practical for an e-bike, no matter how much punch they packed. We talked a bit last week about supercapacitors or ultracapacitors, and graphene is one way of improving those. The traditional material for the electrode in a capacitor is activated carbon. Using graphene, you get a much larger surface area to store charge, so consequently you get a much larger capacity. I think that much of the research into ultracapacitors involves using graphene. I don't really see any other material that can be readily used to increase the capacity by the magnitudes achieved so far. Another thing that I'll touch on later is the quality of graphene needed for this purpose. The higher the quality of the graphene, the more potential to increase the capacity, but also the greater cost then to manufacture. So the further development of ultracapacitors may well be tied in to the development of techniques to efficiently produce high quality graphene at scale. In batteries, there are a few ways in which graphene has been looked at. The first is to essentially enhance lithium ion technology to make it longer lasting, safer, higher capacity, and improving charging and discharging rates. 
But the area I'm more excited about graphene is to use it with emerging battery technologies such as aluminum iron. These have the potential to charge extremely fast, however they are likely some years away from being used commercially in vehicles. Although there are actually companies making these batteries on a small scale that are not confined to a laboratory that are intended to be used in real products. From the reading I've been doing, it looks increasingly likely there will also be hybrids of these techniques, taking some aspects of capacitors and combining them with more traditional battery manufacturing techniques. In terms of lithium ion batteries, the addition of graphene can improve the movement of electrons, thus decreasing the internal resistance of a cell. This increases the rate of charge and discharge permissible, as well as reducing the heat built up by doing these things. So the graphene could be used to prevent thermal runaway of batteries. The mechanical properties of graphene can increase the stability of a lithium cell, allowing for more charge cycles and a greater retention of capacity. This is something that would offset the greater costs currently associated with the manufacture of graphene. If a battery is 50% more expensive, but lasts two or three times as long overall, it's still more economical. The technology that's most exciting to me though, is the use of graphene with aluminum iron cells. These are something that appeal greatly from a use perspective as aluminum and carbon are less toxic. They're not gonna run the risk of catching fire when they're taken apart. They use materials that are much more available as a resource than lithium. Recycling aluminum and carbon is gonna be much, much easier than dealing with the mountains of lithium iron cells where recycling is lacking. And lithium recycling rates are not atrocious because you can't, but because it's simply really expensive and it's cheaper to make a new lithium battery than it is to recycle the components and make new cells from the recycled materials. There's also no cobalt involved with this technology, so we don't have to worry about the artisanal mines in the Congo. So there's lots to like with aluminum iron, even before you look at the incredibly fast charging speeds. And we're talking about charging a phone in four or five minutes. Now, if these batteries then get used in e-bikes or cars, then all of a sudden you have the ability to refuel in a matter of minutes, which would be much more acceptable to people, much more viable to people who don't have access to their own charging point or rely on public networks. It would bring electric vehicles much closer to the same experience people are willing to tolerate at the gas pump. The drawback or catch right now is still the creation of graphene it's expensive and difficult to produce in huge quantities. There are lots and lots of ways of doing it, and they also result in a wide range of quality grades. The battery technologies that would make the difference though require the highest quality graphene, which can be around $800 to $1,000 per kilogram, which is about 10 times the cost of lithium. So there is a clear issue here, but there is also a clear reason to solve this. This is not an engineering challenge that cannot be overcome and the price for doing it will change energy storage and usage forever. The cost of lithium batteries used to be much more than it is now, Then the processes were improved to the point where it's the dominant battery technology. Something like carbon fiber was invented in the 50s, and it really took 40 years before it started to reach the point where it was widely used in manufacture. Solar panels, first created in the 1880s, and 150 years later, they're still being improved and arguably the cheapest way of generating electricity in the world. We live in times now where computing power has grown exponentially. We now have AI algorithms that can run huge numbers of simulations conducting work in hours that previously took decades. So if we extrapolate where we are now compared to where we were when graphene was invented, I think there's good reason to believe this technology will start to be delivered on scale by the end of this decade. The companies developing the graphene aluminum iron cells are putting the theoretical limits on energy density at over 1000 watt hours per kilogram, which is pretty insane. Even less than half of that would be almost twice what lithium iron can presently deliver. The graphene aluminum iron cells currently being manufactured are around 160 watt hours per kilogram. But if they charge 60 times faster than lithium, and if you can pack more of them in because you don't have to worry about heat issues and thermal runaway, just like with the sodium cells, being less energy dense might not be as big a limiting factor as people think. Graphene can also be used as a component of solid state lithium batteries. And Toyota is making a lot in the news about solid state batteries, where you're essentially using a solid electrolyte instead of a liquid or a gel. 
so the ultra-flexible graphene can be used as the interface layer between a solid electrolyte and electrode. I'm not sure if this is the way they're actually doing it, but it is a viable option. If anyone has information on the makeup of the Toyota batteries, let me know in the comments. Toyota are looking at 2026 for their solid state batteries. A lot of this is shrouded in patents and secrecy, which sort of contributes to the enigma of it. Companies investing huge amounts of money are not going to be putting their processes and manufacturing techniques on the internet for all to see, but the fact that they are investing huge sums in this means they can clearly see the promise, otherwise why even bother? So I think the conclusion or takeaway from this is that graphene enhanced lithium batteries are going to come first and some of the more advanced integrations later, certainly in terms of vehicle use. The aluminum cells that are currently being manufactured for commercial use right now are more aimed at smaller personal devices, which makes sense. They are small cells in high value devices and come with massive benefit to cost ratio. Much faster charging cell phones, as well as devices like earbuds, watches, laptops. I would love it if my laptop charged in five minutes, if the battery lasted many more cycles and contained a fundamentally safer battery technology than lithium. I would be amazing. I mean, how many people out there end up with their laptop permanently plugged in because the battery is toast? In this way, I think the aluminum iron companies can essentially perfect and improve the manufacturing techniques at this scale, and then as costs reduce, scale up and start looking at this technology for vehicles. I don't think that is far removed from what happened with lithium iron cells for electric cars. My personal feeling with graphene is that although the technology has a long way to go still, a lot of the hard work has now been done. The prize at the end, I think, is well worth the continued investment. For people that want to be skeptical and say, oh, it won't happen, I'd say look at any emerging technology and how long it took for it to become mainstream. How long did it take for carbon fibre to go from being something that was difficult and expensive to being the go-to material for its incredible properties? Look at pretty much anything in human history and how long it took for it to develop from an idea to something that's everywhere and so common we don't really think about it. In the 60s carbon fibre was difficult to make and use but people could see its promise. Now companies like Airbus make entire wings for passenger aircraft with carbon fibre. It's a mature technology and it's not even really thought about that much anymore. I see no real reason why graphene cannot have exactly the same impact. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. If you've used any kind of graphene cells, I'd love to know and you can post on here or on Discord. Next week, I want to have a really sensible look at battery tech from a safety point of view. So no drama, no panic, no everything's gonna burn down. Uh, hopefully you'll, you'll join me for that. Thanks for watching and a huge thanks to the channel members. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.